the morning you get up and brush your teeth, the tea you drink, the gym supplements you take, the soap you use to bath, the things you use for cooking, the makeup product you put on your face, the deodorant you spray, the detergent you use to wash your clothes, the ice cream you eat, almost everything is controlled by one of the biggest conglomerates in the world and that is Unilever. This 135 billion dollar company owns more than 400 brands and operates its business in 190 countries. It has around 3.5 billion customers who use their products every single day, which is more than 40% of the world's population. In this video will see how Unilever became one of the biggest conglomerates in the world and we will also look at its dark controversial side. Authority has now fined the companies almost 1 billion euros. The workers say they are being severely exploited. It is the 19th century and the industrial revolution in Britain was in full swing. Britain was converting most of its farmland into industries in favor of industrial development. The population was growing and at the same time an increasing gap between the rich and the poor have created a shortage of butter. At that time, butter was a vital ingredient in maintaining the health of the population. So Britain started importing butter from Netherlands, but the Dutch capacity was already reaching its limits. However, fierce competition between the two Dutch rival families, the Jorgens and the Vanderbugs, were driving innovation. They realized that to meet demand, increased production and shelf life was the key. And to do that, they turned to a recent invention called margarine, which is an alternative of butter made from animal fats, developed in France in 1869 under the orders of Napoleon Bonaparte. It was designed to be a longer lasting substitute of butter to help soldiers who were fighting in the Franco Prussian War. Initially, margarine did not taste good, but the rivalry between the two Dutch rival families resulted in a significant development and improvements and finally they made margarine to taste better and more importantly to taste like butter. Later they faced increased competition. So in 1927 the four big margarine companies named Anton Jorgens United, Vanderburgs, Centra and Sykes merged into one Dutch company called Margarine Union Limited. They continued to invest heavily in new research improving the flavor and adding vitamins that would enhance the nutrition from families all over the world. At the same time, another visionary man was building a business that would quickly spread all over the world. English businessman named William Lever had a revolutionary idea. Instead of selling soap to shops in bulk quantities, he would cut them up into small pieces, package it and then sell the soap as sunlight soap. He created a soap brand that was ready for customers to use. The simple idea of creating mass-produced products that made cleanliness and hygiene more affordable for everyone. To boost productivity of his employees, William did something that was unheard or rarely heard at the time. He started giving unemployment pension schemes, sickness benefits, canteens to his employees, and the concept of the 8-hour working day. He used his wealth to build Port Sunlight, a village especially built for employees to live in. I don't know if he did it just for Pearson or he really loved his employees. But this worked very well. These actions made a soap brand more famous and his employees were very happy and thus increasing their productivity. He was rapidly expanding his soap business around the world. In 1927, the Lever brothers started selling margarine but ran into heavy competition mainly coming from margarine union. So to reduce the competition and increase the production and market share, in 1930, margarine uni and Lever Brothers merged into one company and was named Unilever. Unilever didn't solely focus on its margarine and soap production, but rather started to diversify its portfolio by buying other companies or by launching its own products. In 1943, Unilever acquired Lipton Tea. The next year, they bought Pepsodent. After the purchase of Pepsodent, the company grew rapidly, more than doubling between 1944 and 1950. In 1954, Unilever launched Sunsilk Shampoo and now it is the second biggest shampoo brand in the entire world. In 1955, Unilever launched Dove, a soap bar in the US. In 1957, Unilever purchased Bird's Eye, 
a frozen foods company, bird's eyes fish fingers and peas are still popular in the UK households. In 1983, Unilever launched Axe, a body spray in France and also called Lynx in UK and in few other countries. And now it is a billion dollar company. In 1989, Unilever launched Magnum Ice Cream in Germany as a premium ice cream brand. Now Magnum Ice Cream is sold over 100 countries and it has become one of the most popular premium ice cream brands in the world. In 2000, Unilever bought Ben & Jerry's, an American ice cream company, for $326 million. As of 2021, Ben & Jerry's reported an annual sales of over $1.2 billion, making it one of the most profitable and largest ice cream brands in the world. At the same year, Unilever acquired Best Foods, the maker of no soups, Skippy peanut butter, and Hellman's mayonnaise for a whopping $20 billion. Now it is a revenue of over $50 billion and it is one of the biggest companies in the world. The companies that I mentioned now are some of the most famous and biggest companies in the world that has been launched or acquired by Unilever. In total, Unilever has over 400 brands in its portfolio and employs over 140,000 people all around the world. Behind its big success, Unilever has a dark side and has been around a number of controversies about its questionable business practices from allegations of price fixing, labor violations to environmental damage. The company has faced a barrage of criticism from activists, regulators and the public. In 2011, Unilever was fined by the European Commission for participating in a price fixing cartel which includes PNG and Henkel in the laundry detergents market in several EU countries. Unilever admitted its involvement and agreed to pay a fine of $112 million as PNG owns Tide and Gain while Unilever owns Omo and Surf. Henkel owns the Purcell. These three giant conglomerates came together and discussed not to decrease the prices when making the packages smaller, but rather plan to increase the prices. These price-fixing cartel operated in Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain and the Netherlands between 2002 and 2005. Few years later, Henkel shared its legal activities that it was doing with Unilever and PNG to the European Commission. And this is how the world came to know about this price fixing cartel. Do you think Unilever learned this mistake? Absolutely f not. In 2018, Unilever faced similar allegations in India, where the country's antitrust regulator accused Unilever of colluding with another consumer goods brand to fix the prices of a popular detergent. Unilever denied the allegations, but later it agreed to pay a penalty of $2.7 million. Unilever have played a major role in the destruction of forest, especially in Indonesia for the sake of palm oil. Around 128,000 hectares of forest have been destroyed for palm oil expansion between 2016 to 2020. 2 million hectares of forest and 2 million hectares of peat in ASEC are at risk of potential future conversion and clearing into palm oil. Unilever is also accused for not doing enough to protect the rights of the local communities that are affected by the palm oil production. In 2001, in a hill station named Kodaikanal in South India, Unilever operated a thermal factory. As Unilever acquired Pons in 1987, Pons Thermometer Factory was transferred to Unilever. The factory imported mercury from the US and exported Finnish thermometers to the markets in Europe and USA. Around 2001, a number of workers at the factory began complaining of illness related to the kidney. When experts found the kidney-related illness, it was happening because Unilever has been dumping mercury or poisonous material in the Kodaikanal's forest reserves. When the workers came to know about what Unilever has done to the mother nature, they became furious and started to protest against Unilever. After the shutdown of the factory, the health specialist from Bangalore conducted a survey among the workers of the factory. It found that the workers of the factory had visible signs of mercury poisoning such as gum bleeding, skin allergy and other related problems. Unilever initially denied the allegations but later admitted and agreed to clean up the factory site. Later, 
a lawsuit was filed against Unilever and the company lost the case and is settled to compensate 591 ex-workers. So what do you think about Unilever? Share your thoughts in the comment section and thanks for watching.